Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel for all new modded impact driver to wrench conversions for you on today's episode as we test them all and create a custom modded impact wrench ranking to see who tops the charts. Quite some time ago, we tested the Frankenstein half inch anvil swapped Gen 3 Milwaukee impact driver that Mancaver Tools cooked up by converting this little guy from an impact driver that would normally use an adapter to run bolts and nuts to an impact wrench that not only made its form factor a much more attractive hip shooter, but it also made it, we felt, insanely powerful for its size, beating out the best Milwaukee can offer in compact impact wrenches, at least. Today, with Milwaukee's Gen 4 impact driver out, Mancaver Tools is at it again with an all-new Gen 4 Frankenstein. Can it make even more power, or will it instead die an even quicker death than our own Gen 4 driver did for us? Not to be outdone though, our friend Jim over at Philly Fixed made not one but two conversions of DeWalt's now famous micro impact driver, the DCF850, in both half inch and 3 8 drive using off the shelf DeWalt parts. See his video below for how and his testing on these as well. But what's most exciting to me about that DCF850 DIY mod is that with its creation it becomes the smallest shortest cordless impact wrench on the planet. So if you want a true 4 inch pocket rocket of an impact wrench, you'll have to build one yourself because no brand is offering it as of yet. And if none of those three custom mods are impressive enough, we have a fourth secret weapon conversion that may just come and sweep the floor with a lot of them. These DeWalt 850s from Philly Fix came to be when he swapped a half inch anvil and then found an even shorter 3 8 anvil that's not often used to make the smallest impact ever. And yeah, these are small. We'll be calibrating the dyno separately for this 3 8 impact after testing the half inch to mitigate any socket mass difference as much as possible, as there aren't too many 3 8 impact sockets that go up to 38 millimeters that we need, but even compared to that Gen 3 driver with no socket, it's looking pretty small. And that's because while DeWalt's shortest impact wrench is about 5 inches, and their 12 volt extreme is even 5 and a quarter, this half inch DCF 850 mod measures 4.3, 4.38 inches, and the 3 8 version, that's about 4 inches flat. That makes it shorter than the rigid subcompact at 4.3, and that one with the battery sticking off making it a bit more pronounced of a difference too. And we hope it makes more beans than that rigid too, as we've seen some decent gains by swapping quarter inch hex collets for square drive anvils like these. Let's take a look at our first testing series called Working Torque 5 Seconds and Forward. Here is the half inch DeWalt conversion. One hundred and thirty eight doesn't sound like a lot yet, but let's take a look at the three eighths pocket rocket on the dyno calibrated for this socket. One hundred and forty two, not too different quite yet, but still both up on a rigid subcompact so far. These two DeWalt's, of course, have to take on this, the Gen 4 Milwaukee 2953, modded by Mancaver Tools, with a half-inch anvil from a M12 compact impact wrench. Our own Gen 4 famously died on us during testing, mangled an impact adapter, then gave a bunch of blinking death lights, and eventually stopped working. So personally, I think this Gen 4 with a half-inch anvil slapped into it may be a genius move because losing that impact adapter altogether might be just the best thing for this tool for our use. Realistically, while beating the DeWalt's would be cool, this thing's closest competition is of course a Gen 3, it's potentially replacing the 2853 driver, which was Frankenstein and very impressive to us. So the new model with more impacts per minute and potentially a little bit more power in some situations would be a welcome introduction. And just look at it, this is sort of a sweet looking setup I feel. Let's find out in our first 5 second test, up first is the original Gen 3 Frankenstein versus those DeWalt DCF850 mods. One hundred and ninety-five. I forget at times how spicy this thing was. That same gen of impact driver, of course, made more than DCF850 impact drivers as well, but not this kind of gap. Okay, time for the Gen 4. I certainly wanted to see this. 
198, okay, that's a wee bit up on the 195, but coming in late, which is a surprise to me, I felt this tool would be sort of an all up front type of tool. One way to be sure, let's take a look in reverse with our 10 second max torque test. Here is the 3 8 and half inch DeWalt hybrids up first. Now the 3 8 coming out on top again, yet this time to more effect, 189 over 159. We tested this relationship over and over and still found it between these two sizes and Jim at Philly Fix saw this too. There's something about this tool, perhaps it being so tiny, that prefers the smaller mass 3 8 anvil. Like many Milwaukee impacts do, as we found, but is not a good rule of thumb to apply to most things. Here's the Milwaukee Gen 3 Frankenstein. Two thirty-eight, man, that thing comes out the gate quick. Widening the gap on the DeWalt brothers below it now, and here's the latest impact driver on the market, the M18 Gen 4 converted to half inch. Two hundred and fifty, able to again come in later in the curve and make a splash. We figured with the higher impacts per minute of this tool, it would be making early gains, then sort of run out of steam later on, but at higher torque levels, it's still delivering, and also getting quite hot in the process, we find. Our last test with these tools is one that's not often afforded to impact drivers due to adapter life, our 15 second best case scenario run. Here's the DeWalt's taking on the Milwaukee one last time. Man, that 3 8 at 212 foot-pounds basically performing like a different tool altogether once it's attached to a smaller anvil. But neither really touching that Gen 3's area under the curve at all. If you look at our impact driver ranking, using traditional quarter-inch hex collets of course, the DCF 850 made 167 peak in a 10 second reverse test. These DeWalt's converted to wrenches went under that here with the half inch and well a bit over that with the 3 8 so if you do convert these for size and power reasons, go 3 8 for sure. But not as a big a difference as we expected from losing that impact adapter like we're used to seeing on Milwaukee's. So let's see if the Gen 4 can continue to squeak out a lead. Here is its final BCS test. Two hundred and sixty-four with some better than seen before gains on the curve as well. We found in a best case scenario test using the best run, the Gen 4 can do even better like shown here when the stars sort of align compared to a median test that we show you on other runs. These custom tools aren't quite as consistent as other off the shelf stuff. So on to the ranking then. Well. Just to potentially spoil the Milwaukee's high, as we like to do as often as we can, it seems. We've also got a care package quite a while ago from a viewer by the name of John Reynolds, who sent us this Cobalt XTR modded impact driver, which uses a half inch anvil from this now impact driver, but previously was impact wrench Cobalt model that we've tested as well before. Now, why is that interesting? Well, currently the XTR driver sits atop our impact driver ranking due to power and price and it makes all the beans, even with a quarter inch impact adapter to drive sockets. So take that adapter out of the equation and we might just have the spiciest modded driver on the planet right here. Of course, it's a longer tool at 5.6 inches, so it'll have to make up for that. Now I'm just going to get this out of the way in case you're curious, but using a cobalt compact impact wrench converted into an impact driver, not a recipe for success. It made 67 foot pounds, then 89 and 89 foot-pounds in our three tests, which would put it towards the very bottom of our impact driver ranking. 
but the XTR? Let's see if it can upset things in our new modded impact leaderboard from today. Here is its 5 second working torque test versus the others. Two hundred and nine foot pounds coming in later, which makes sense on this one. It should have less IPM but bigger hits. For some perspective, that's ten percent more than a four hundred and fifty foot pound rated DCF nine twenty one in this test. Okay, on to reverse now. Two hundred and forty-three foot-pounds, quite good, but didn't enjoy reverse quite as much as the Milwaukee's. Still piling on some steam towards the end there, though. Let's see its final BCS test. We figured based on these runs so far, it would do best in forward, but for some reason it didn't. So here's it in reverse. Two hundred and seventy-four, and obviously a record for this fairly new class of tools for us, taking top honors. Let's see how all those tally up on our leaderboard. So we have the old Milwaukee, the new Gen 4, half inch, then 3 8 DCF 850s, and the XTR down here for now. Here's all of their power runs which get turned into points as such for impact wrenches. You'll notice this ranking has no column for advertised specs honesty because none of these advertise any specs, they are custom, which makes the remaining columns like this one weighted even heavier now, which I like for this group since it is all about power for size, sort of the whole reason for the episode. The Gen 3 was impressive and is still impressive now, 52.9 foot-pounds per inch. The Gen 4, while sure a different power curve, but did punch up some peaky numbers, and has a slightly shorter overall length to boot, that's 57.8 foot-pounds per inch, very nice. The DeWalt's come in at 41.7 and 52.2 foot-pounds per inch, the 3.8's basically being a shrunken down Gen 3 by this math. The Cobalt XTR, while certainly spicy, is noticeably longer, and thus gets 48.9. As a function of power and price, that's 16.5 for the now affordable Gen 3, 14.1 for the Gen 4, only 9.8 for the half-inch DCF 850, those are pricey tools looking at the power alone, then 11.3, and the best of the bunch, 20.9 for the Cobalt. That awards them totals of 138.4, 143.9, 100.5, 118.5, and 142.8, placing the newest model, the Gen 4, in first, followed by the XTR, with the 3.8s, of course, being the best version of the DeWalt. Was hoping to see some more heroic-like performance removing the hex call it on these, but when your hammers are this small, removing that adapter loss surely is less of a difference it seems. Now that said, at this size, if this tool fits where the others don't, and well, every other cordless impact ever at this size, it's still going to be pretty useful. The XTR squeezes into second, really for its size I think maybe just get a DeWalt DCF 921 which makes more power so a conversion may be not necessary on this tool. Still cool to see nearly 300 foot-pounds from the guts of really a tool that's for driving screws though. The Gen 4 Milwaukee, by the numbers, it's the best. Surely a tool like this, with this power size, without an adapter, and the IPM can remove, for instance, a diff cover quicker than anything else in existence. Heck, probably remove some entire steering knuckles in record time. It gets quite hot from long-term use, but so did the DeWalt's down here. It also cut out on us once or twice during use. It just sort of stopped, something we've heard from people using it in driver form as well. Now, I still like the Gen 3, but considering most of what we have less than great things to say about the new tool, the Gen 4, is that call it getting beaten up by us and seemingly seizing and not working anymore. This half-inch anvil swap is certainly our favorite version of this Gen 4, and when you compare it to the performance here of Milwaukee's latest M18 Compact Impact Wrench, you know, that you can buy, well, it'd also be Milwaukee's best performing Compact Impact Wrench by our measure if they did make this tool. This time, from our perspective at least, 
it would be hard to argue that it isn't being made this way for reliability reasons too, as it's the most reliable version of this tool, at least that we've tested. Now go visit the creators of these tools below, click subscribe to catch stuff like this every Friday, and thanks for watching.